What role did the men play on the series? The characters. Yeah. The characters of the men in the series were so important because one of the reasons the season didn't dry up was because we let the ladies learn from their mistakes. So the first couple of seasons, the men were one-offs. You know, the guy without the, the guy with the, the guy, Mr. Pussy or this or that, they were all jokes because the girls were making inappropriate mistakes. So the characters were inappropriate. And then when the girls had to keep learning, because women learn, people learn. From 32 to 38 is a huge growth spurt. So right around, they started at 32, right around 34, we decided if they keep making mistakes with men, that means they're not learning. So they're therefore gonna part ways with the smart women in the audience. So the men became very important. And each of the men we brought into their life had to serve a purpose in their evolution. For Mr. Big was always the great, you can't have him, which seems to be fundamental to every woman in the entire world. There's one guy they can't have that they become fixated by. And Chris Noth, as Mr. Big, was genuinely male. So something resonated really male about him. So it was a really good thing she couldn't have. It felt true. Um, that was really important. And then to bring in John Corbett as Aiden was the other flip side, which was the soft man. And to, it, it, all the men were used to illustrate character flaws in the women, to bring up the things the women had to learn or to show that the, they had weaknesses still. The men were noble. The women made the mistakes. That was why, why Sex and the City was never a sort of a feminist diatribe, because the women were basically cream pieing themselves constantly. And the men were kind of always saying, this is who I am. And then the great thing was whether you want to hear it or not. And so we brought in a lot of very worthwhile men, but always to move the characters forward. We brought in the perfect preppy, Trey McDougall for Charlotte, because she was a person who dealt in surface. When she was through with that growth spurt, growth spurt we brought in less than perfect Prince Charming Harry to show that she had developed as a being past the obvious. It was all part of her arc. Miranda Steve was to melt her, to be a guy who was affable, who didn't really, who thought she was funny, kept that arc going for a really long time because we made Miranda a, a mother because she's the one you would never make a mother. She's the hard one. So we made her the soft one. Uh, and then Samantha had one big or two big love interests in the show, Richard Wright, but mostly Samantha was just there to be the single, crazy single woman. But the men made, and Berger for Carrie was to show that every no matter who he is, he's not going to be enough for her if it's not the one he wants. And Petrovsky was brought in by Misha to, 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 I brought him in because I knew we were ending the series. And the only comment I ever heard about Big was, he's too old for her. So I decided if I brought somebody in older, he would look like her high school sweetheart. So that was that. It's all writing. It's all about creating an arc that you want the audience to feel. But there, the men were brought in only to evolve the characters of the girls.